Right, the theme of this week, um, I guess, if you're a New Zealander, has been protests. Um, we have become a bit of a protest culture in this country, and increasingly our political agenda is set by activists, uh, be they of the left and the right. Um, and one of those who has very much set the agenda and shown that a small number of people can have a maximum number of political, but also infuriating effect, um, would be James Cockle, who joins us now. Um, James, good morning to you. You are the spokesperson for Restore Passenger Rail. Have I got that right? That's right, Michael. Great to be with you. Good to have you on the show as well, and thank you for joining thank us. You. Now, um, I guess the thing that uh, strikes me as interesting is you hail from Dunedin. Um, you have got yourself arrested twice in Wellington um, for what is euphemistically known as restore passenger rail, but obviously your aims and objectives are a bit wider than that. Um, how does a person from Dunedin get arrested twice in Wellington? Well, you come to Wellington and you sit on the road. That's how you get arrested. Um, you know, and, and of course, Wellington's the place because that's where the power is. That's where the politicians are, which are making the decisions, which has led us to the disastrous situation that we're in at, at the moment, where people don't actually have a viable alternative to um, driving or flying. But here's the bit that I don't get, and you explain it to me. I'm a lawful person who may be sympathetic to your cause, driving to work or trying to get my kids to school or trying to get to a specialist or a doctor's appointment, and you and 11 of your mates are sitting along Transmission Gully stopping me. Um, at what point do you think that you'll engender my sympathy with tactics like that? Well, we know that sitting on the roads does upset people and we do feel sympathetic to what they're going through. We're all in this together. No, and we're not all in this together. Sorry, James, come on. Can I... You're expressing sympathy, but that's not real, is it? Because you're still doing it. So if you were sympathetic, you wouldn't do it, would you? Well, you know, I mean, it's like an alarm bell that goes off in the middle of the night. It wakes you up. It's not very comfortable. It's very unpleasant, but it might save your life. And that's the, that's the reality of the situation we're in now. I mean, we can see birds falling from the sky in India. We can see cats and yes, dogs falling over dead over there from the heat waves. I mean, you know, this... this so this how is you... Now, okay, so, but wait on, James. How that. is you sitting down on a highway going to stop what's happening in India? Well, we're, we're demanding that the government take action. Restore passenger rail is a small, just a tiny step in the right direction. It would connect 3.5 million people with regular, accessible and affordable travel by train. And that mean, and it would also reduce our carbon emissions. So we're demanding that the government take make good on its promise to take action on climate change. And that's what governments all over the world can need I, to do. Can I just say there were 12 of you? Uh, listen, whatever the yeah. merits or whatever of your cause, there were 12 of you. Now, we have a democratic process in the country, in this country. You are a member of the Green Party, for example. Um, so you enter that political process. In fact, you challenged, uh, I think, um, the Greens co-leader um, for the yeah, leadership. Yeah, I did. Okay. That's right. So you have a political process to work within. Why, when your own party is a part of the government, would you then seek with 11 of your fellows to inconvenience literally thousands of law-abiding Kiwis? Michael, it's because the government is not capable of making these, these changes. We, they came in promising that they'd take action on climate change, housing and poverty, and they've done nothing. Emissions are still going up. And so what, we, what I'm seeing and what I'm convinced of is that this government is not capable of doing it because it's too beholden to big interests, the roading lobby, the um, trucking lobby, um, and, you know, the, these groups have got so much of a, of a hold on our government that they're not capable of making the, the right decision for our people. OK, so, so are, 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 you still, are you still to, a member... Take this action. James, are you still a member of the Green Party? Yeah, I am. I'm doing everything I can to change things there as well, but I'll, I'll be there until they kick me out. Well, that must be fairly close, I would thought. Um, <laughs> just quietly. Um, now, you've been arrested twice... Um, I would imagine you were on bail the second time you got arrested, were you? Yeah. So I'm pretty sure your bail would have been telling you no, no more protest actions, would it? Or, or can it or cannot? Yep. It did say that. Yeah, that's right. 
said no more no more illegal actions like that and i um broke my bail to, to take another action all right um and so yeah i'm currently on bail at the moment but i just are you, so are you rebailed so that when they arrested you again did they rebail you as well yeah yeah that's right and what's have you got the same conditions imposed upon you oh pretty much pretty much yeah uh, and so you would still protest again if because those bail conditions don't matter to you? My bail conditions stipulate I can't um, encourage anyone to take that kind of action, so I'm not going to say that I'd take that action or not, and I'm certainly not in, you know, encouraging any of your listeners to take that action, but I am encouraging them to understand what's happening in this world and step up and take responsibility for themselves and their loved ones and not just sit around waiting for this collapse to happen. Because when it comes, it's not going to be the rising sea levels or the cyclones that are going to be killing people. It's going to be the collapse of society that comes when a billion people are forced to leave their homes. James, do you have children? Forced to move. Yeah, I do. How old are they? Uh, 21, and then I've got some older ones as well. Okay. So you don't have anybody at school at the moment or anybody as a teenager or a primary school child. Um, That's right. Yeah, But but I have got little coral as well. Your little grandchildren. I mean, I mean mokupuna, mok- yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. on the coral. Yeah. Okay, so, yes, you are, that's right. That's the problem when white people use Maori terms. Um, it is. It is, yeah, yeah. You get a bit mm. mixed up sometimes. Yeah, you do. Well, you, so you should probably just stick to the white terms then and let the Maori uh, have the Maori terms. But, um, well, okay. You know, but, but th- we could debate that forever. Well, we probably could. But um, the reality... I just want to ask, answer your question from a minute ago because you, you were saying how it's a drastic, um, a drastic thing Well, it's do. just that I don't understand and why I... you couldn't have stood on the side of the road on Transmission Gully with your things out, making exactly to the point to all of the traffic, and then you would have made yes. your point to everybody and yes. you probably would have got lots of toots of support and people would have agreed with you and everybody would have been happy, including you. Yeah, that's right. That's right, and I wanted to answer that for you because... The thing is, our people, our you know, people who are supporting this cause have been doing that for 10, 20 years. They've been standing on the side of the road. They've been marching on Parliament. They've glued themselves to Parliament. They've, you know, they've been doing all sorts of things: signing petitions, um, going to select committee meetings, and nothing's been done, and no attention's been paid. And this kind of action, unfortunately, is the level we have to take things to in order for people to pay attention and take a position on it. Well, you we, know, we have and, taken and a position, we're, we're and I, I think 99 point... A, a but James, on. listen, James, 99.9% of us have taken a position, and the position is, we don't like you doing that. We think no, that there right, are more mature and thoughtful and, frankly, sympathetic ways in which you might protest. I, I mean, respect that opinion, but, however, a, a huge a number of people do support the rest- restoration of passenger rail in this country. People from right across the political spectrum support this idea. You know, so that's the thing. That's the thing we're asking people to take a position on. We understand that, that the actions we're taking will upset people. You do. Uh, so when you say that you're sympathetic, you're not really. No, we're so, of course we're sympathetic to the situation people are finding themselves in. It's, it's actually a really hard and confronting thing to, to bring yourself to do. But when you understand the, the situation, that, the dire situation that we're in, then it becomes a, a, a worthy um, cause. It becomes a worthwhile thing to do. You know, you, that one hour stuck in traffic is, is nothing compared to the absolute chaos that's coming if we don't take action now. We've got two to three years to turn things around. Okay, uh, what, what if I don't know. agree with you, though? What if I, in actual fact, um, think that, which I do think, so at least I'll put this to you, that anything that New Zealand does, even if we go to carbon zero tomorrow, so we ban all trucks and cars, um, and we decide to slaughter all our animal stock, and we go to code zero tomorrow, or ze- road to zero tomorrow, it's not going to make a blind bit of difference internationally, is it? Well, it will make a difference because How? we are the country we're the country best suited in the world to do this. Right? We're the ones that have got the, the heaps of um, renewable energy. We've got a really good opportunity no, sorry, to do this. And you're yeah, missing the point, take... James. James, you're missing the point. Well, even I if New answer. Zealand well, no no no, I'm asking you to address the specific issue of even okay. if we emitted no carbon at all, it won't make a blind bit of difference to global climate change, will it? If we alone did that, you're right. But we have but people are all us over to do it the alone. world. Yeah, but we have, no, I'm not. Because we have people all over the world taking action like this. All over the world, people in countries like ours are demanding their government step up and take action. I haven't noticed right that happening thing. in China. People in Sweden. I haven't noticed that happening in Sweden. Yeah, but, but, but James, James, you're missing the point. Why are you so racist in many ways? The, the key oh, here, why I'm are you concentrating racist. on white countries? 
The countries that are most that most at blame, most at fault, are China and India, and then you can add the United States and Russia. They they emit more carbon. They emit more carbon. China and India, the United States and Russia, than any other countries on the planet. Why aren't you going? Why aren't you going to the Chinese? Why aren't you going to the Chinese embassy in Wellington and sticking yourself to the rails there? What would you think if Chinese people came over here and told us, or went to the Chinese, uh, the New Zealand embassy in China and told them how to do things? I don't you're think you'd joking. Like it That's not but your you're, answer. Your assertion's bull. No, it's not. Your, your answer, answer is because you don't want to tell the Chinese what to do, even though they're the ones that are emitting more carbon than any other country on the planet. No, no. You're, what you're saying is a load of bull. I'm sorry. No, it's Michael. not. I've got to pull you up on it. Well, let not, me, let I'm, me I'm only citing the United you, Nations intergovernmental panel. The, the Western nations carry far more of the burden of this um, of this emissions because they have historical emissions oh, throughout so it the, isn't, the so time that they've gone into this industrial revolution. But we're talking about now. We're revolution. talking about and reducing carbon now. And yes, China and, produces and, now more carbon than e- emissions than any other country on the planet. And you're saying yeah, to me, um, well, I'm, could, I'm not possibly going to go and tell the Chinese what to do because... That's for them to decide. Well, that would be would very like, arrogant of can me. Can I please finish my answer, Michael? Can but that's I just what you've told answer? me. No, I haven't finished. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry if I can't just spit it out in one sentence, but the, the answer is because these Western countries like ours and America and uh, Canada and the UK have decimated their own manufacturing industry, and so the things that we purchase are produced in China. That's why. So their emissions are actually our emissions, and we have to take responsibility for them. What, um, what planet do you live on, James? Because I'm not sure it's planet Earth in terms of your construct. You're suggesting essentially that because China is producing goods for New Zealand or Canada or Sweden, we are responsible for their emissions. Is that right? Of course we are. Of course we are. We're importing right. their goods. We need, to, we need to account the emissions in, embedded in those goods that we import. Um, we need to account for them, clearly. I mean, how... Ha- you know, we're the ones bringing them in. James, it's not fair, you realise that's it's an extremist view, don't you? the way you? it is. You do realise that not the, even the Green Party believes that. Well, it's the reality of the situation. No, but not even the Green Party, the party that you belong to politically, believes what you've just said and it, it would, would even contemplate suggesting that we well, should, look, in actual uh, fact, count China's emissions <laughs> as part of ours. I don't, I don't have the Green Party policy on that right in front of me, but don't, don't forget, I'm not... Just because I'm a member of the Green Party, it doesn't mean that um, all poor people in Restore Passenger Rail, there's a wide variety of people um, involved in supporting Restore Passenger Rail. And, and what I'm telling you is we do need to take those emissions seriously. If China won't do it, we have to do it. We need to cut down how much we're consuming. It's like if you're sitting at the dinner table and you take 90% of the food, the other people are going to be upset with you. And it's our nations that are consuming an unfair portion of, of this earth. You know, if everyone lived like a New Zealander, we'd need four planet Earths. Um... We emit That's the reality, I'm sorry. Four, no, no, I'm, the reality, I'm sorry, James, is that we admit 0.4 of 1% of the world's global carbon emissions. So 99.6% of the world's carbon emissions are not emitted by New Zealand. But per capita, our emissions are high, and we're not counting it, those embedded no, emissions. No, we're not counting we're not that. Counting we don't count that. International shipping or aviation, and our government. What's its plan? It's to buy emissions overseas. Okay. Right. You know? So, so and, you and, and I. No let's, 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 ag- let's agree to disagree, James. And and you, all right. You, okay. Okay. Let's but move let's, on. Okay. Let's move on. You intend to continue to infuriate, frustrate, and upset ordinary New Zealand as part of your protest action. I am asking the minister and all politicians to take a position on this. Are they in favour of restoring passenger rail across the country, connecting no, no, people that's not with the people with an affordable service, you. or are they going to not do it? Am and I not if they're not going to do it, they need to stand today. up and say so. I'm pretty sure I was. I was asked that I, question I again. I, I, no, no, no. You said no, you didn't in actual fact. You deliberately, deliberately didn't answer it. I asked you, will you continue to infuriate, frustrate and upset ordinary members of the public and the way in which you've been doing in pursuit of your political ends, and you waffled on about what the minister should do. I'm interested in what your interaction is with ordinary New Zealanders. Well, you know, I, I'm not. I'm not going to say that I'm going to be out um, blocking roads again. I don't have any, any immediate plans to do that personally. But supporters of Restore Passenger Rail feel so strongly about that. You know, I can't. I can't 
promise which way they're going to go on that. They feel very strongly, and this is a last dish effort. This is the last roll of the dice and the scramble to save humanity. Okay, so you know, we've um, got, we've so got how three much to four years. And then that's um, that's not my words. That's the words of um, so. Did you say King. four years? We've got three to four years to turn okay. things around. So what if we, we do, haven't we'll turned just things turn around, in the okay. Humanity. So if we haven't turned things around in three or four years, will you go back and sort of retire? Well, I'll be, I don't know what I'll be doing if we haven't turned things around. I'll be extremely sad. I mean, it's like if the doctor says you've got cancer, right? You can, you've got two options. You can listen to the doctor and, and do what they say and you might live or you can block your ears and pretend it's not happening and then you suffer a fate, wor a fate worse than death because you, you know when you, get, when you do start to feel sick that you're gonna, you are going to die and you could have done something about it and it's right. going to be a but I can, I, I, And that's what we're heading to as a society if we don't do something James, now. you've stood for political office. You stood just recently, for example, for the Otago Regional Council. I um, did. Congratulations on getting in, by no, the way. No, I was no big deal. Thank you. But, um, but nevertheless, you stood for political office. You had the opportunity and you did. You promoted your views to the electors of Dunedin, who are, I have to say, a particularly woke bunch, so, and who, uh, you've got a university right in the middle of it, it's a Labour town, um, there's a strong environmental and activist background in Dunedin, probably stronger than almost anywhere else in New Zealand when I think about it. Um, mm. Yet, you did not get elected. Why would, does that suggest that your views are out of kilter or that you haven't done your job politically properly? Well, you know, I think that um, I probably could have done a better job. It was my first attempt, and I'm, I'm very proud to have got over 6,000 votes. But, um, you know, it was a, it was a good four or 5,000 off the mark. Um, so are you going to stand you know, again? So are you going to use the political process or are you going to use the activist process? Both. You've got to use, I've got, I feel like I've got to use everything that's available to me. All right. Thank you very much for talking to me. I appreciate that, and I appreciate the dialogue. Um, and I hope you have a good weekend. Thanks, Michael. Thank okay. you. All right. Yeah, appreciate Thank your time. Okay, James. Right, see you later. All right, so that is the Restore Passenger Traffic, I oh, know, Restore Rail Passenger Spokesperson James Cockle. Um, that's the background to it. I wanted to have that interview because I wanted you to understand um, what the thought process was the next time you see this and whether or not you concur or whether you think, ah, oh, whoa, whoa.